Hello everybody, my name is Ronnie Cowan. I'm the 4-H agent here in Okaloosa County for UF Office. We're here today in the kitchen here at the Extension Office and we're doing something exciting. This will be for the uh, 4-H virtual um, day camp in culinary arts. We're going to be doing a meat cutting demo. We have a lot to discuss today. We'll uh, uh, just graze the surface on a lot of cool science, but uh, let's get started. I have this here. This is a whole sirloin. It is in a vacuum sealed bag. And this is what we call uh, wet aging. It is vacuum sealed uh, to keep longer. We'll talk about the food preservation later. But we're starting out with a whole sirloin selection. I'm sure that most of y'all have enjoyed steaks out in the restaurant. Well, many of y'all have probably ate a top sirloin. When you were at a steakhouse and you ordered that top sirloin, or if you were out grilling, did it look like this? No. So we're going to fabricate this down, show you some principles of meat cutting. But before we get started, you have to have the right tools for the job. Make sure you have the correct tools. You will need uh, cutting boards and knives. And a knife is a very important tool. You make sure that you select the right knife. Obviously, I would have a very hard time doing this with a butter knife. So make sure that you have the right tool for the job. Uh, first and foremost, safety first. If you're a youth, please make sure that you have a parent with you, uh, someone to supervise you. Uh, do not do this by yourself. So make sure that you have parent guidance. But the parts of a knife, you, you, this is obviously the blade. This blade runs all the way through the handle. That part's called the tang. So we have two here today. We have a, what a, a, a sort of like a fillet knife, but this is not a knife that you'd see to fillet a fish. It's more stiff. And then we have this bone-in knife that I like to call for bigger pieces. The way knives work is they use angles. There's two angles on this that creates a blade and it cuts on angles. That's what creates the cut. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, as we go on. But remember safety first, always. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually open this up. And I always like having a sharp knife. That's why you need to remember safety first. Uh, a sharper knife will not make me push it. It'll actually allow me just to glide and uh, not have to hack saw and slip so we'll just pop the seal there remove this cover I will like to save the price because we're going to talk about shopping power keep that there for the time being so we will remove this Make sure that you're careful. Leave all of that, ju the juice and the blood in the bag. And we will try not to make a mess. All right. So we have this nice top sirloin or this whole sirloin selection. What I first like to do, if you notice, there's a seam right here on top. So the basic principles of meat cutting is we want to separate fat from lean, thick from thin. So as you can tell, we have a seam here. We're going to want to remove that. Another reason is because we notice that meat has grains like wood grains. So if you see that is grains, right? Those grains are running this way. If you look at this piece, the grains are running in a totally different way. Okay? So when you look at a store, you may see a top sirloin slice like that. But I do not uh, necessarily like that because we want to cut against the grain. Because it breaks down fibers, it makes it... Um, a little more tender if you do so. So the first step with this selection, we separate 
thick from thin, fat from lean. So we'll come in, trim this up a little. Let's see, I'm just pushing my knife, nice, easy, glides. Nice, all right. Now we have two parts. We have this cap. I removed it just like a baseball cap. Comes off. And then we have this is what well, I like to call the heart. All right. So knowing your meat products, we know that top sirloin is a lean steak. Uh, it's traditionally uh, not fatty because of the meat property. So we want to trim anything off that doesn't look uh, lean. So we're going to take this external and we are going to trim this up. Remove that. Now, in a butcher shop, we utilize every bit of it. You can at home too. Where do you think these trimmings are going to go? Are we going to throw those in the trash can? No. That is going to go into hamburger meat. So we take that, save it, and that'll be going into hamburgers for to grill, to make hamburger help or whatever you would like. So trim all that excess off, get it looking nice and trim. I even like taking some of that off, that membrane. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we have a nice trim piece. Now let's turn over the back side here. We see some stuff that doesn't quite look appetizing. As you can tell, we need to trim this up to make a lean steak or kebabs or whatever we want. Cut off some of that excess fat. If you notice, this here looks a little different than the meat. So we're going to take that part off. And we used to call that mole meat, but uh, there's, a, there's a little bit better terminology that sinew. you. It's very rubbery. You would not want that on your steak or on your roast. If you uh, do, it would uh, get as bigger the more you chew. So we don't want that. So we're going to trim all that up. Get all that off. All right. Separating thick from thin again. We want to make sure that we want to get that seam out following that sinew or that mole meat as I called it. All right so we have it shaped up a little bit finding another seam on this heart let's separate that out. All right now we have three. All right. We are almost ready to have our first steak. Again, follow the grains. The grains are running this way. So we're going to make our cut this way. All right. I like to do a facing cut just to straighten up and then we'll come in about a half an inch to an inch and cut our first steak isn't that nice nice round cut make sure that it is even so it grills or fries or cooks evenly and then you have these little cuts here. This is more what you're going to see uh, in the restaurants. Come here. Remember, knife's cut on angle. So we're going to create two. 
one angle down and straight back. And you have a nice round cut that you're probably familiar with seeing at the steakhouse. And our last division, certainly not least, this is kind of a butcher's secret. This is cap off, or you might hear it, hear it called a culotte steak. Personally, my favorite part of this cut. Again, just trim it up really nice. This membrane, this connective tissue and stuff, we want to get it all out. So we're going to take our blade up we're going to get as much as that off as we possibly can again it's a lean cut come through so since it's lean we want it to not have a lot of excess fat so we are going to take and fillet this apart out Now, again, we find the grains. Grains are running this way. We are gonna come and make a nice steak there. And look how nice that looks. Look at the marbling. The marbling is the interspecular fat that's throughout the meat. Adds the tenderest juiciness, and that's also a, one of the criteria that they use to grade meat. But very juicy, very flavorful cut one of my favorite cuts of steak cap off or culotte steak we'll take a break that was a lot to cover i want you to reflect on knife safety how knives work uh, some of the locations of these cuts this is from the right or are from the short loin area the sirloin and we'll come back and we'll talk about maybe how to prepare these steaks so you can enjoy your next eating experience thank you hello welcome back to the kitchen here at okaloosa county extension uh, Ronnie Cowan here, your 4-H agent. If you remember, we did a great job cutting up these steaks. I showed you the proper techniques to use a knife and talked about food, uh, food safety a little bit. But we're here back today to discuss power and shopping. So why would I want to do that? Uh, I know that you can go out and you can buy a top sirloin already cut. You can pick it up at a local grocery store. But why would I take the time to do this? Well, for one, uh, let's talk about saving money. I bought this whole sort or, or uh, this whole sirloin for sixty-three dollars and thirty-two cents, and today, and today, we cut how many steaks? Let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, and then twenty-seven and twenty-eight under my knife here. So that equals about $2 and a couple cents per steak. How many times have you went to a restaurant or a grocery store and seen a top sirloin steak for less than $2.50? Not much. So it gives you power in shopping, especially if you need a lot of steaks. Now, obviously, it's just me at home, me and my wife. We're not going to eat all these. I would love to try. As a matter of fact, that's my number one qualification to teach this. I love eating. I love to eat beef. But we're going to have to save these. So let's talk about food storage. These steaks can easily be frozen. And really you have two options at home. You have wrapping. You can have freezer wrap. You can wrap these in a nice package and freeze it. Or you can have a home vacuum sealer like I have. We want to protect against what we call freezer burn. We don't want to let air in. Uh, we don't, or we want to protect and, and safeguard our uh, product to keep it clean and keep it wholesome so those are your two options now if you're like me I prefer a vacuum sealer because it's quick and easy but if you're good at wrapping maybe wrapping Christmas presents you can be successful at wrapping paper but if you're like me when I wrap meat it looks like a Tootsie Roll if you wrap meat and it looks like a Tootsie Roll it's not going to protect it so I just like to go ahead and use the vacuum sealer. 
To use a vacuum sealer, it's quite simple. If you have a unit, you cut your bag to the length you need. You put it in your machine. You're gonna close. And you simply just hit seal on one side. And that's gonna take a little bit to heat up, but it melts a strip across and seals the bottom. All right, when it's done, there'll be a, a light or a release. It released there, and I like to check it. You'll at least want to keep a little space between your seal and the other side. I like to check to make sure that it has sealed because it is possible to get a false seal. So take your stake. We want to slide it in. I could actually do two stakes in one, but for this purpose, we'll just do one. You can have more. I like to give myself plenty of room. You don't have to give your much or, or, or this much headspace. But the reason I like to give room is I think it seals a little better. Also, if you're vacuum sealing something very uh, juicy or moist. Uh, for example, if this was fish and had a lot of water or if this is very bloody, when it vacuum seals, it pulls air out of the package. And if you're marinating or if you got a liquid, it's going to pull that too and that can actually cause you not to get a good seal. So we're going to put that in, make sure that it's closed and I have to readjust here. And then we're going to vacuum seal. And as you can see, all the air is entering out of that. I'm put a nice packed tar seal. You can see that I wasn't lying to you about the liquids. Releases. And it's ready to go in the freezer. Now this will last uh, a pretty good while in the freezer. Uh, I like to use it within six months. It's not a safety issue. It's more of a quality issue with this. Don't mix up safety versus quality. All right, safety is mandatory. All right. Thank you for viewing that. If you're uh, more interested in, in, in uh, food preparation, there'll be a lot more outlined uh, coming soon from UF Office and our 4-H team in the Panhandle. Thank you, and uh, when you return, we'll talk about uh, cooking this and some meat properties. Hello, welcome back. Thank you for uh, joining me in the Okaloosa County uh, kitchen here. Let's talk about some meat properties here. We've cut it, we learned how to freeze it to, for storage. Let's talk about how we actually cook it. These high value cuts from the short loin, these steaks, I like to use uh, very high heat. And really, there's only two cooking methods. Uh, to be simple, there's dry and there's moist. These tender, more valued cuts, you can cook dry. Some with their more connective tissues uh, require moist cooking methods. The short loin produces some very good steaks. You have uh, the sirloin, the T-bone, the porterhouse, and then before that you have ribeyes. They all can be uh, cooked with, uh, with dry methods such as a grill. Some, some like the chuck, chuck roast and things, they require a little bit more moist. But basically, get your grill hot. You will place it on the grill. I like about an inch thicker cut. For me, it allows time to cook better. Cooking does one of two things. It either toughens or it tenderizes. So depending how you break that collagen down depends on your cooking method. Again, just on the grill, short temperature, high heat does great there's all different kinds of ways to cook steak you'll know some people like them rare medium rare all the way to well done and that's fine cook it the way uh, you want to because we're here to promote uh, beef and have fun with it you can use marinades you can use uh, salt and pepper marinades are a great tool to use but if you're going to use a high quality cut give that meat a chance to impress you uh, very sometimes very little marinades when you pay money for that quality steak let the properties of the meat um, 
uh, impress you. But that's just a very simple rundown. We hope to actually cook some for you. And if you're interested in meat cookery, we do an excellent uh, uh, competition here in uh, Florida. The virtual tailgate um, day camp will be a great resource for you to learn more about that. But thank you again. Look forward to seeing you the rest of the camp.